Marriott can only be answered when the project is completed. It is the same kind of pessimism which surrounded the construction of Bodies Hotel, now Princess, that was proven wrong with time. The next email comes from Baba Videsh. Good night. How come we have so many members and few from the opposition? My question, is the Marriott more important than paying our old age pensioners, building a new harbor bridge and even paying our people more? Cedric Lord says, good evening guys. I wish to urge all persons in opposition to government's investment in this project to note a section of an article which appeared in the Washington Post on September 19, 2011. DC developers seek subsidies to build two more Marriott hotels near Convention Center. The developers planning two Marriott hotels across from the Walter E. Washington Convention Center say they want to begin construction next year and have asked the city for $35 million in subsidies to help finance the project. Quadrangle Development and Capstone Development, both based in a district, began building a Marriott Marquis on 9th Street Northwest nearly a year ago, financed with $272 million in district money on city-owned land. Now we bring in a comment from Facebook by Trinity Watson, who says, Good night to you folks, and once again, I wish to thank NCN for putting together this program, especially in light of the numerous allegations surrounding this and almost every other project undertaken by the government. Another Facebook comment is from Clay Thomas. I support the comment made by Mr. Gavaya, and no one of the panelists can give a more insightful opinion on matters of tourism in Guyana. Well, join us again after the debate for another feedback update. Thank you very much. And as we return to the debate, just to remind you that this is the s debate series on corruption in which we select seven important topics, uh, issues, and we debate them in a series of seven programs. This is the second in which we are discussing the Marriott Hotel project. Now, our panelists are the Minister of Finance, Dr. Ashni Singh, representing the People's Progressive Party Civic, Mr. Odinga, uh, the Honorable Odinga Lumumba, Member of Parliament, Mr. Winston Brassington, who is our expert on this panel, the expert on the, on the topic being discussed. We have uh, the Honorable Kemraj Ramjatan, uh, leader of the Alliance for Change and Member of Parliament, and uh, Captain Jerry Govaya, representing the private sector. Now, uh, one of the one of the persons of the, from the audience sending in their questions and comments asked about the imbalance in the in, in the panel, and the, the, there's no representative from a partnership for national unity, for example. And I just want to remind you what I had said at the beginning of the program that a partnership for national unity was in, indeed invited and involved in the very first debate. The did not appear for this debate in spite of communication with them and invitation. So that explains the current imbalance and why uh, Kemraj has to be fighting so valiantly <laughs> to <laughs> uphold <laughs> the, the opposition views. And for that reason, we are going to start this segment of the program with him. Yes, <laughs> thanks very much, Al. Um, I'm glad that at least I'm here fighting. The aspect of having a private sector that is stunt, uh, well stunted as a result of what um, Jerry spoke about earlier does not deny the fact that if this thing was so economically feasible, commercially viable and profitable that we could not get private sector from the Caribbean or foreign direct um, investors to come into this thing. And that is the problem we are having. We are giving the impression as if this thing is an extremely profitable thing. And why then foreign direct investors, Marriott itself, Marriott itself international coming to do this? I believe, quite frankly, Mr. Moderator, Al, that there are obtuse motives here in relation to what the government would like to do in, uh, in, in, in countering a person and now that it was raised by Odinga Lumumba, Mr. Robert Medal and the Pegasus, we would like to state that there will be here 
a sellout of this, this company when things go real bad to probably a set of their cronies by putting up this money uh, initially. We have seen that happen with even Clico to a certain extent. $34 million in breach of a certain regulation, money gone overseas to Florida, we, and we had to go and spend a whole set of monies to, to pay back the, 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 um, the, the, the policy holders. We have seen also, because of a number of things, like what was greater than the Skeldon Sugar Estate plant? And today, all the manner of things created a defective Skeldon plant. We got to find an additional $50 million. We are saying that with a Skeldon plant, it could say, well, fine, money should go there. It has a sector. But this one has direct bearing on private sector, not necessarily Guyanese private sector, but we can have the CARICOM people. We can have foreign direct investors from overseas. Why are they not coming? And there's another little point. When we had asked for, for the economic, what do you call the thing, the feasibility studies, we weren't given any feasibility studies. I don't know why the feasibility studies were not given to us, okay. but no, if they're saying um, it is so... You have said quite a lot, and I'm sure that there are many things there that other panelists might want to respond to before we come back to you. Okay. Uh, I, want to deal, I want to deal just with the feasibility study. Mr. Ramjitain knows we said in our response to Parliament that it was being updated. We also invited the opposition to a private closed-door presentation on the Marriott project because there are aspects of the feasibility study that are confidential. We never got a, a, a response to that. We did that for the hydro. I think, I think it went well. So we have a feasibility study, and we have invited them to come to a closed-door presentation so we can let them know the details that we wouldn't want to make public because it's commercially sensitive information. Okay, let me say, let me say first of all, that on the matter of the feasibility of this project, it's not for an Ashni Singh or a Kemrad Ramjatan to casually make statements about the feasibility of a project like this. The feasibility of this project was studied by professionals and was pronounced on, and Winston Brassington referred to the findings of that feasibility study, which we said we we're willing to sh uh, share in a confidential session with the opposition. With, with the opposition, that's the first point I want to make. The second point I want to make is that there is recognition by the international private sector of the viability of this project. There was a public turning of the sod ceremony at which sitting at the head table was not only our former president, President Barry Jaglium, as president of Guyana, but sitting at that head table was also, were also representatives of the Marriott International. In fact, a vice president of Marriott International was present, signaling and indicating clearly the Marriott International support for the project. The Marriott brands, manages, operates, plays a particular role in projects. The Marriott doesn't go around, Marriott International doesn't go around the world building hotels as such. They operate by way of franchises, branding, management services, etc. Um, and you also had uh, regional financial institutions. You had the Republic Bank present and visible at the turning of the South ceremony. So, so the regional and international private sector are very much on board, and I want to emphasize that point. I want to say, too, that it's most regrettable and extremely unfortunate that Mr. Ramjitan <coughs> should choose this forum to make obtuse comments about cronies. The fact of the matter is, and I think the Alliance for Change uh, needs to come clean about this with the people of Guyana, the Alliance for Change has objected to this project in defiance of the domestic tourism sector saying the project is good and in defiance of the international uh, uh, private sector as evidenced by some of the companies that I've alluded to saying they're supportive of the project. And some of the regional potential sponsors and investors in this project have in fact said privately to us, we really don't like this political harassment that we're being subjected to by the opposition. And the AFC needs to come clean and say to the people of Guyana, the owner of the main competitor with the Marriott, Mr. Robert Badal, is in fact a publicly known supporter and benefactor of the Alliance for Change, or is widely believed to be a, 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 a strong supporter and benefactor of the Alliance for Change. And Mr. Ramjitan himself has acted on behalf of Mr. Badal and on behalf of his company. And so there is a vested interest in the Alliance mm -hmm. for Change. So if you want to speak about cronyism, there is where the cronyism really is. Okay. Um, um, I, I wanted to just say that, you know, we could have many... Hunter. Each one of us could have views, but we can't have our own facts. And I think they, 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 when, when we talk about this project, it's, it's quite okay for us to have our own views. You know, in Jamaica, for example, Jamaica is spending 100 million U.S. dollars a year to market Jamaica. 
and that's and that's government spending. Britain in 2012 they are now starting to reduce government spending in marketing because there's some there's some activities, some economic activities that the gov that government need to need to stimulate things like marketing, things like the transmit the huge transmission projects. I want to just say this to you: when I started in tourism 25 years ago, um, the private sector was alone. We, the government, was not believers at the time, and we, when we saw the government started to believe and started to understand, we started to see policies that was promoting the Ghana tourism product and promoting Guyana. Because remember, in the world, Guyana is not known. So this is not just about tourism; this is about business development as well. That when we see the government start to do the things they were doing and started to talk about the merit, you had a, you had an, an applause coming through from from the, the private sector because while we know that people are saying this is going to give us competition. In fact, what it is going to do is raise the standards of our tourism industry and our service providers in the, across the country will benefit tremendously from the insertion of Marriott. And one last thing I want to say to you. I have met the beautiful Marriott. And for the people uh, from the Marriott to agree to brand the hotel in Guyana is not an easy thing. Actually, for it to happen, it's, it's, it's a medal for Guyana. It's an honor for Guyana that Marriott could come because they don't only come to look at the economic viability, they look at the entire uh, where Guyana is, where it came from, and where it's going. They examine the business climate, they examine the issues of governance climate, the, the security climate. And when they finally decided to brand this project, for me, I was elated because it, it said that we were on the right track. I think the critical thing here, one of the critical things is, outside of OMI, Mr. Ramadan talked a lot about the private investors in Guyana. Outside of OMI, which was really foreign investment, I don't think there's any private investor in Guyana has the capacity at this point in time to invest 50 million US dollars. You go overseas. And I'm saying, and again, I speak about vision and his leadership. He doesn't understand these things. Foreign companies, when they come overseas, look at a 35 to 40 percent rate of return. They don't just come to a country because they have a project. What they may accept in America, eight or nine or ten percent, even money don't have conscience. Once they go abroad, the rate of return is almost 30 to 40 percent. How much you look forward to? And, but not 40? No, not at all. <laughs> but Mr. Ramjitan doesn't know this. But what's more fundamental oh my God. and emphasizing what Dr. Singh said, Mr. Ramjitan historically has come off as a bounty hunter for the Pegasus of Mr. Bodak. Okay. He's not more a bounty hunter. <laughs> you're not dealing with this thing by economic sense. But you can see a bounty hunter. Let us, let, us, let us allow Mr. Ramjatan to He can see a bounty hunter, a very good one. <laughs> <laughs> and conveniently, when he wants to be for the PNC, he beats for the PNC, and then now for the PVP, he's going to be a bounty hunter. More than the PVP, too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the Marriott that was showed itself and was present to the sun, turning ceremony was only here because they are going to charge and become you know beneficiary to a 10 percent gross takings on that Marriott when it's constructed that arrangement is not unique to the guy no well, well that's what I'm that's saying so don't give the impression, don't give the impression um, you're giving the impression that okay we got the big Marriott coming in as if it's support they coming in for the profit that will be made so after taxpayers that. monies will be utilized if they are so and the, the, we come back to this point we want to know why they are not coming in. And we know also, from now, uh, the, the, the studies that we have carried out, and uh, this is also from some accountants that have helped us, when it comes to the actual costing of a room of the Marriott quality, it's about 100,000 US dollars, the general cost. You multiply 197 rooms by 100,000 US, the cost most will be about $25 million. How come? Have we done any study in relation to this? How it will take $52 million? Is there something underneath that we are not seeing? The rule of thumb in relation to the Marriott size and scale and quality is 100,000 US dollars per room to construct. Okay, uh, Mr. Bassington. We went through a competitive tender from 23 firms whose um, were thought to be pre-qualified. Seven firms were pre-qualified. We got two tenders, one from a French um, consortium, one from Shanghai Construction. The first set of tenders that came in was 72 million and 62 million. We asked them to retender and we got them done so that they, it came down about 10 million. 
this is not just building property. You've got to outfit it, furnish it, equip it with everything. It includes an entertainment complex. It includes a promenade. So where are Mr. Ramjitan's accountants, I mean, c calculate what it should be? The asset test is who will build it. And that we determine publicly. That's the way we determine oh, more things. No, Again, right. how do you so it from 78 million by 10 million dollars? Why isn't that 52 million dollars too expensive? It is what the market brought in. Yeah, well, we that faced is this we many times. You're dealing with a uh, different environment. You don't have the sort of engineering firms that build 10, 10 story high rises anymore. We lost think, that. I think you know what's important the, the fact that the merit is inserted in this project. The cost of this project, the operational cost of this project, the marital quality control is not only from service standards, but from governance standards, accountability standards. Marit will not associate themselves with this project. Corruption. I, I mean, I, I, you know, for me, the fact that Marit has brand this project should give Guyanese a tremendous sense of pride of where we stand and where they project, where we project we are going. And so for me, the 52 million, whether it's 52 or 53, the Marit will, will be with this project every step of the way, monitoring it. And the fact that we will then be catapulted into the Marit marketing program. Marit are not coming here to take away the Pegasus um, um, business. Um, business or, or Roraima business. You know, Marit is going to come and create a they tremendous new market for Guyana. People the follow the Marit, wherever the Marit go, they call it the Follow American Airlines and Air Canada. There are people who will follow the Marit and other major brands will follow the Marit into Guyana. Watch it. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's it happened all over the world, and we in Guyana need to be catapulted to that next level. Whether it's the airport project, whether it's the hotel project, the, the, hydro, the hydro project, we need to start moving and jump and jump starting the development. We can't, we can't hope to go in some kind of straight line um, to development. It has to be catapulted at stages, and I think this is where we are now. Hey, you know, gentlemen, um, the, the height of the discussion now has to do with feasibility, it has to do with the cost of the project, it has to do, it has to do with who is funding it and, and and so on now the one question that I would like to, to 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 come in has to do with the the question of whether the Marriott is going to compete on favor unfairly with the hospitality industry already existing in Guyana and we are going to go to a break now and when we get back from that break we are we are going to invite uh, closing statements from the participants. At the moment, we are going to go to a break for the broadcast of the lotto draw. We have to go to the lotto draw at this point. <laughs> Welcome back to our debate on corruption and we are looking at the Marriott Hotel project and we are now on to the final part of this program. But before we invite the panelists to speak again, we are going to go to feedback. Back desk, now we begin this section, this section with um, a comment. If actually an email from Atia Bash. She says, hello folks, I have a question for Mr. Winston Brassington. During a time when the private sector is being seen as the engine of growth, it is wise that the government invest up to US 27 million in a venture that will be competing with businesses owned by many private investors who have spent enormous sums without the benefit of taxpayer dollars. The next email is from Linda Passad. Good night. Thank you for this series. It seems government's participation is a good sign of their openness to discussion. Where is APNU? The AFC's objections seem to be along the classic opposition party lines. The hotel is not only a government initiative. Private investors will be investing in this hotel. How can how can we refuse a brand how can we refuse a brand like the Marriott in Guyana? How can it be rationally argued that it is not needed? Could the answer possibly be Badal's AFC membership? Listen to Mr. Gavaya's examples. The developed world has planned this too. We cannot afford to wait until Mr. Ramjatan thinks the hotel is needed to be built. How are we to move forward? 
develop and maintain the vibrant economic growth we've been experiencing. We need vision. This is what we're seeing here. Thomas Cole says, is the AFC's opposition to the Marriott construction stemming from a genuine concern about the way state funds are being used? Or are they pandering to lobbyism given that the owner of the Pegasus is a supporter of that party and one might want to even say a financier of its 2012 campaign? If it stems from concerns about the way state funds are being used for this project, that, then what are those concerns based on? Another comment coming from Facebook from Vic Prasad says, Well, tourism is going to improve because Guyana has so much to discover. So yeah, I would encourage to build it. Go Guyana. Okay then, just remember to join us again on Sunday the 26th for another debate series on corruption and continue to post your comments on Facebook, NCN's Facebook page, as well as to send your emails to our email address. Have a good evening, viewers. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. And uh, as we return for the final uh, segment of this, uh, of this debate, uh, the question that I want to pose to the panel is uh, just one raised by a member of our audience. And one of the charges which have been made up against this Marriott project has to do with, again, government's participation, which is seen as uh, giving an unfair advantage in investing taxpayers' money into a project that is going to compete with other business communities, with other business entities in the tourism and the hospitality sector. So that question I wish to put to the panel. And we are going to have to be very brief in our responses to that because we are moving rapidly to program time. I just want to say quickly, for me, it, <laughs> it, 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 to me it's entrapping the government. I have always been critical of the government of not spending enough money on marketing Guyana. When the government invests their money in this, in, in this, in this Marriott um, uh, Hotel, they will now have to start putting their money with the motors. I've always been very critical. While Jamaica government is spending $100 million, our government is spending a $1 million, 500000 I want to see our government put $10 million into market in Ghana to position us in the world. And to me, <laughs> that's why we are very, very supportive and happy about this Marriott project. It shows a serious commitment on the part of the government to now, coming, now becoming aware of, the, of where Ghana is and what we need to do. So we welcome the Marriott uh, project. Yes, any other responses to that? They, they, they are, they, they are, the question here has to do with whether, it, they, whether government should be investing in a hotel that is going to be competing with other like businesses. Well, you heard my answer to that. It is obviously no, but a lot of the government people here feel that I'm doing so yeah. simply because Robert Badal well, is my uh, friend. Uh, uh, it is not... Sorry, sorry. No, you I, I wasn't... I, I didn't... That wasn't my intention. I'm basically stating it's a public project good for the country and Mr. Ramjotan interest to me as opposed to it should be a patriot on this issue but <laughs> to me his intention I am a patriot he, here well, he's here no today because he's, he don't question because that. he's a supporter of Mr. Badal who was given him and, and he should disclose so the public would know his interest he should disclose there how much money people that Mr. Badal has to change money that doesn't mean that we should have to change money no, there's a gentleman. Please. There's a gentleman. <laughs> one second. There's a gentleman with a lobbyist named Abraham in America who yeah. got jailed because he took a lot of funds to push political favors for different projects. And the minority speaker, I think, of Texas, was jailed also for the same thing. I'm not saying Mr. Ramsey Tan should be jailed. But you are a member of the Tan government Mr. Ramsey Tan who is pushing the funding. Are you doing so without good reason? Okay, you have made your point. Now let us allow Mr. Uh, Ramsey Tan to let me, let me say, oh, Before we come, yeah. Uh, let me say this in, in response to the question that you asked. And that is that here you have a major international brand coming to Guyana because Guyana is a good place to invest in. You have inter regional financial institutions supportive of the project. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with government making a modest investment to catalyze a much larger private sector investment that will, in fact, raise the tourism industry to a different level altogether. And Guyana is not 
inventing the wheel in this regard. There are abundant examples in Trinidad, the examples of Trinidad Hilton and the Hyatt Regency were given. Uh, there is in Barbados, the Barbados Hilton and the new Barbados Four Seasons, which is about to start uh, construction, are all public sector projects public sector, publicly funded projects. We are not going, in fact, the route of an entirely public sector funded project. We are, in fact, only going uh, a modest uh, 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 way down that road. Okay. Uh, uh, just a, ca a, a catalyzing investment. Right, any comments, Mr. Brassington? <coughs> the, um, without, without a government involvement, this project will not happen. Um, during the period that this project was under development, the public the, uh, the opposition criticized this project, saying we will never get the Marriott brand. After we secured the Marriott brand, they then began crying, well, why are you putting one-third of the funds? You know, why are you trying to compete with the Pegasus? Ignoring all of what is happening in the region. Um, the Pegasus, the, the Marriott will pay their taxes. When it's built, they will operate on the same fiscal regime as any other hotel in the country. Okay, all right. Now we have come to the point closing remarks where we are going to invite closing remarks from the panelists. All right, I'll, I will go first. Um, might be a little more than the two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking up. No, 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 I'm not <laughs> taking up. <laughs> time. Taking yeah, up time. They have surrendered their time to me. I believe that the NISIL monies that are going to be go in here ought to have gone to the consolidated fund. We have been making big issues about that all the time. Rather than be utilized as this slush fund for the purposes of the executive branch doing as it thinks necessary at this point in time, that is to build a hotel through the auspices of a, another company called Atlantic Hotels International which again has certain membership from NISIL's um, membership, board membership. I also believe that in view of the fact that there are so many other priorities that this money, had it gone into the consolidated fund, the larger parliament would have been in a better position to, to, to see its expenditure rather than simply an executive branch which is constitutive today of only 49% of the country. And that is what is called transparency. That is what is called good governance. Rather than the money which is supposed to be in the consolidated fund now goes into a NISIL account and then NISIL does what it wants with it. On the basis of certain premises it makes that it is a good feasible project, we're going to get the branding from Marriott and all of that. I want to feel that also with the money being in the consolidated fund we would have put it into the priority areas that could have made tourism a better deal by virtue of putting the money into the, 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 the city uh, um, better infrastructure the roads and all of that a tourism faculty probably in the University of Guyana and the private people whether they be local or Guyana, um, um, CARICOM or even broader from England or wherever then coming in here and putting all the hotels, the Windham and the Marriott and all of that. And to that extent then, we differ vastly from the government on that issue. All right, thank you very much. We now invite Minister Ashni Singh. Let me be very clear. The opposition agenda must be seen for what it is. And it's regrettable that it is not an agenda that is driven by nationalist considerations. The, uh, the opposition, the political opposition in Guyana has been on a one-way road to obstruct progress in Guyana. You've heard objections to the Marriott project on no credible basis whatsoever. For the simple reason that when these catalytic projects happen, the opposition appears to be somehow of the view that these projects will redound to the credit of the People's Progressive Party in government, and so they have, in a very single-minded and blinkered manner, been opposing these projects for the sake of opposing them. That's, I, I think we need to call a spade a spade here. And it is purely for political reasons that this Marriott project, like the other projects, have been opposed by the opposition. I want to say this, that our national leaders, the leader of the Alliance for Change included, 
leaders of the People's Progressive Party included, must be able to be objective and rise above partisan political considerations and embrace initiatives when they're good for Guyana. And I don't believe that anybody could seriously or credibly argue, and I don't believe anybody has credibly argued today, that the Marriott project is not good for Guyana. It will create it's a large investment, it will create jobs, it will generate growth in the economy, it will improve competitiveness in the sector in which it will operate. And I think a nationalistic leader, a national leader driven by national interest considerations, must be able to rise above partisan uh, uh, politics and embrace good national initiatives such as the Marriott Project. And I want to commend Mr. Ramjatan for coming today and participating in this discussion. I think it's, uh, I'm, I'm pleased that he's here and we've had this engagement. And, and I, I, I hope that uh, some of his questions have been answered. I want to say that this government is open to answering any question asked and sharing any information requested even that information that is subject to confidentiality clauses, as we have indicated before, we will have a closed-door session with the political opposition to share the salient details of even those documents that are subject to confidentiality clauses. All right, we said this you. in relation to the Amila Falls project, and we said this in relation to the Mario project. And finally, I want to express my strong disappointment that the APNU, despite their refusal to support this project, given an opportunity to participate in this discussion, did not see it fit to come to me. All right, uh, Mr. Lumumba. First of all, I want to support my colleagues in terms of the presentation of Mr. Govaya from the private sector. Again, I'm glad Mr. Ramjitan is here. Uh, I've known Kamraj for a long time, and I, I, I'm a bit disappointed that tonight I see a gentleman who I knew as a moral politician, to moral. who's today has acted as a lobbyist <laughs> for a company who has given substantial funding to his political organization. I, and I, 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 and I'm, I'm indeed disappointed in camera tonight. That's all I like to say. All right, just have a plastic <laughs> time. Michelle <laughs> and myself have been subject to much criticism by Mr. Ramjitan, quite unfairly so. Today, we've come here on a single um, charge that they have accused us of, has been evidence. There's no evidence of corruption. There's no evidence of cronyism. The opposite can be said in this case for Mr. Ramjitan. <laughs> we will have we will have the case of Nissa in a few weeks' time. But this project is good for Guyana. This project has gone through a public procurement process in all respects. This project didn't start when the elections happened almost a decade ago. The government's commitment to put money into this project was well before the elections. It didn't happen when the change in parliament occurred. We have to be careful. The opposition, by going after NISO, going after these projects, going after me, without putting up evidence, Ponzi scheme, money laundering, is damaging the investment climate of the country. And if we're going to move forward, I welcome this initiative and I thank you for coming. Okay. Right? And I've challenged you to debate because if we just speak outside of here and you circulate the papers, you're going to hurt Diana. Deal with the issues frontally. And I'm glad that we're doing this because it shows that everything we've talked about when we got here face to face, there's nothing of substance on corruption to put on the table. The private right. sector feel vindicated in the sense that for the last 25 years, 20 years, we have been fighting um, to, first of all, catapult Guyana onto the tourism um, uh, industry stage of, of the world. You know, there are $600 billion being spent in tourism across the world. There are $20 billion, about $600 billion that is being spent on the niche market of eco and adventure tourism, which Guyana um, is em em embracing. And we are now touching, we are now starting to touch the tip of that iceberg. Um, I don't see the Marriott as, a, as, as, the, as the main 
connection to our ecotourism, but I certainly see the Marriott as a connection to the development of Guyana, to where Guyana is going from business for investors. And if every one of us are concerned about creation, creating jobs in Guyana, the issue of investor confidence is the only way we will create those jobs. <coughs> and if we do anything to affect investor confidence, the very people we are saying we want to help, we will be hurting. Because if we chase investors, if we create an atmosphere of hostility that will, that will scare the investors away, that is the only way we will create employment in Guyana. And finally, I want to say to the minister, and I do this just for a matter of consideration, um, with all of the allegations or fears of corruption, maybe that you should think of setting up some kind of oversight body. Invite the, the members of the opposition to, to look at these projects as it go along um, from a position of scrutiny to look to see if where the loopholes is and if it's out of their government institutions that need to do it. But I believe that we need to take the concerns on board if there is such concerns. I'm not, I'm not going to deal with what you believe is the motivation for it, but I believe that all Guyanese would want to know that if this project is being done, that is done transparency, in transparency and good accountability. And if you have to set up an oversight body, then do it. Well, Al, if I may very quickly respond to that. I said very clearly that we are open to providing any information and answering any questions. And we have done that with respect to the Milo Falls project. We had a session convened by the president at which we did a technical presentation, took questions, and asked for follow-up questions. And we've said we're prepared to do it with any national initiative. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> right. um, Mr. Ramjatan, you... No, 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 I just wanted to say with all of that that was given in relation to Amaila, we still had the fiasco of uh, FIP Motilal and Synergy and the busting of that contract for the road construction and all of that. So not because you're going to say these things that you're going to get all doesn't mean that they are not matters that are corrupt happening. And we know about the Mila Falls deal. Right. Right. But look, okay, no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. No, 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 I evidence. Yes. Gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. I allowed <laughs> Mr. Ramjatan because he had. Uh, there, there, there were things said which I, I think he had to respond to. Right. Thanks very much. But it, but it is not to invite. No, I'm sorry. No, gentlemen. Please, gentlemen, please. We. It was not. No, no, no. No, gentlemen, it was not I mean, an I open invitation. Mr. Ramjatan will please, that's then? enough. Mr. Loma, but that's enough. <laughs> it was not an open invitation to continue the debate. Right, we have to close, you. we have to close so the program. And we thank you very much for your participation. We had today a debate looking at the Marriott Hotel project and our panelists were the Honorable Dr. Ashley Singh, Minister of Finance. The Honorable Odinga Lumumba, Member of Parliament and Representative of the People's Political Party, Civic. Mr. Winston Brassington, our expert on the project. Captain Jerry Govaya, representing the private sector. And the Honorable Kemrat Ramjatan, leader of the A AFC and Member of Mr. Parliament. And we thank NCN for the production of this program, the second program in the debate series on corruption. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.